Hey friendlies, I'm Carolyn and welcome back to my RV life. I wanted to do a quick update before we jump into today's Alaska video for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, I just want to let you know that no, I'm not in Alaska. I think most people know that who watch me on any kind of a regular basis because I've talked about it a bunch of times <laughs> that I'm no longer in Alaska. Um, but uh, I've gotten a lot of emails from people who are concerned about me. So I just want to say thank you so much for your concern. And uh, yeah, no, when I found out Capone was sick in um, September, I think it was, I was leaving Alaska and I misspoke in comments earlier. So Capone was diagnosed in um, the Yukon, uh, Whitehorse actually. I was slowly making my way back and then he was diagnosed and only given a few days to live in uh, the Yukon. Uh, yeah, I was kind of out in the middle of nowhere. He got better and, um, well, he seemed better. And then at that point, I just wanted to get back to the lower 48. So I made it back through Canada, I think in like four days. Yeah. Yeah, so it must have been like mid-September. So I, I said earlier, uh, you yeah, know, it was in my last video, actually, uh, the budget video, I think, or the 10 reasons you may not want to be an RVer. Um, uh, I know I'm not making any sense. <laughs> I'm still grieving. Yes, I'm still grieving. Um, so it's still affecting me now. It's, it's affecting me in very weird ways. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But anyway, I said in my last video that Capone died in Northern Yukon. He did not die in Northern Yukon. He did die in the lower 48, but he was diagnosed and I had to drive back and I was up there all by myself when he got diagnosed. So that's what I, what I meant. But no, I'm, I'm not in an Anchorage. Thank you for your concern and for all of my viewers in Alaska and who may have family or friends in Alaska. My thoughts are with you. Um, I hope everybody is okay. It's a 7.0. Uh, you know, I know in San Francisco, I lived through a 7.0. Was it 7.1, I think, in 1989. So I know a little bit about what a 7.0 earthquake is like. Uh, so I know that it's probably not as bad as everything we're seeing on the news. And I haven't really been um, following up. So I don't know that if there were injuries or deaths a lot. I heard there weren't uh, so but I hope everybody is okay and my thoughts have been with you and thank everybody for your concern as far as grieving um, I'm gonna keep bringing it up as long as it's there because I am I feel like um, just pretending everything is okay uh, is a disservice not only to myself and to Capone but to you uh, I'm committed to sharing my processes with you uh, you know, the ones that I do share, choose to share publicly, I might as well follow those through, right? Uh, I, I'm, I'm better. I'm, <laughs> I'm better and I'm not better. Um, I'm not crying as much. In fact, I've gone several days without crying. Last couple of days I've been tearing up again. Um, you know what? I'm making a video today. Um, so that's, uh, so today is hard. I'm watching, um, some really good times with Capone. Boy. And, uh, I didn't know they were my last days with him. I wasn't going to cry. Hold up. Anyway, I didn't know they were my last days with him. Um, but the grief is is still with me in some very other ways. In, in some very other ways. In other ways. Uh, you know, I'm just uh, struggling. I'm just not myself emotionally in a lot of ways. And people seem to... Um, some some people seem to really want to push my buttons right now. And so I'm losing my temper very easily, uh, very easily. I'm just, I don't have the patience and I just don't have the, um, compassion and empathy I would like to have for other people right now. I'm feeling really drained. And so it's causing me to act out in ways that I don't normally act out in. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, you know, having a hard time kind of taking care of myself right now and this job being on YouTube uh, requires me needing to in 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 a lot of ways learn how to take care of other people um, because if I don't it's kind of like being a therapist. I think a lot about my therapist. She's a saint. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot like being a therapist. I'm dealing with a lot of different personality types and a lot of people who come to me for very different reasons. And um, if I don't act the way they expect me to act, they can they can respond in very um, negative ways. It, so. To, like my therapist says, it requires me to hold space a lot of times. And right now I just, I'm not able to hold space for myself, much as other people. And, um, and so that's causing, uh, some chaos 
in my little world right now. Um, and yeah, I don't know. How many of you think I'm perfect? <laughs> I just have to ask you that. How many of you think I'm perfect? Show of hands. How many think Carolyn is perfect? Nobody, right? Um, I think you all probably can guess. You've probably seen me that, you know, I lose my temper sometimes. I get angry. I don't always respond appropriately. Um, am I always kind? No. I mean, my mantra, be happy, be free, be kind, is, is as much a reminder to myself. And I'm a work in progress and especially doing the job that I do now. Let's just say I deal with a lot of different personality types. And um, that's what I'm really struggling with right now. Grief is still affecting me in very real ways. But where I'm at right now is... Uh, God, the past couple of months has been about looking at my life as a life without Capone and I'm now starting to get to a point where it's just my life. Um, it's just Carolyn's life. It's not Carolyn's life without something. It's Carolyn's life. Um, a full life. Just doing what I, what I love to do and learning to adjust to the freedom that I have. All right, um, I said more than I wanted to say, and so I'm gonna sign off, but I'm okay. And I hope you enjoy this Alaska video. Um, I think that's also part of the reason I'm a little sad. Oof, I had a badass moment. <laughs> and then I said, I'm feeling kind of badass now. So stay, stay tuned to the end of the video to see what I was feeling so badass about. Um, I'm feeling badass, and then the universe kick me in the gut. So this update was really just to say that I'm not in Alaska. I'm fine. And yeah, I'm still grieving. And yeah, I'm not myself. And yeah, you know, you might see or hear things that I have said and done that I'm not proud of. Um, but I'm not perfect. I don't think anybody expects me to perfect be perfect. Uh, you know, I'm bullied and harassed every single hour of every day when I read comments and I have to handle it every day. And it's never easy and it's especially not easy right now. So with that, I'm going to go enjoy this video. I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you're all doing well. And uh, everybody in Alaska, I hope you're okay. I'm thinking about you and I'll see you all soon. Enjoy the video. Bye. northern side of Attigan Pass, the tallest pass on the Alaska Highway at 4,739 feet or 1.4 meters above sea level. It's, it, so we're crossing the Brooks Range and if you look down over here you'll see the uh, valley that I just came out of that I, that I camped at at Galbraith Lake and uh, it's 11 or 12 percent grade so it's pretty steep. This is uh, about mile 244, and it's where it crosses the Continental Divide. This pass was shown in the third and fourth seasons of the History Channel on Ice Road Truckers. This is the most dangerous, steep, curvy, rocky part of the Dalton Highway. I don't have a CB to call. Uh, I would highly recommend if I ever do this again, I will I will get a CB. But um, since I don't have a CB, 
to communicate with truckers. I'm trying to be extra considerate, uh, especially on this. You're supposed to call on your CB before heading up or down because it's narrow. So I pulled over as soon as I could to let the truck go by. And um, I've been doing that all along the road. Even if there's not a turnout, the roads have been wide enough. I just come to a stop and pull over as far to the right as I can to let the trucks pass. It's a truck's road. But uh, I wish I had a CB. It'd be fun to be able to communicate with the truckers. So I'm just going to stay here and let this guy pass. And I can see the rest of the road. I'll be clear. and it's a heavy avalanche area as well. So this is a pretty significant pass up here in Alaska. This is uh, one of the worst parts of the road. This is after Attigan Pass. Or before. After going south. I need a break <laughs> and it's a good time to check the tires I'm constantly checking my tires on this trip uh, before I start in the morning of course when I stop at night and whenever I stop for my breaks I'm always checking my tires and checking doing kind of a visual inspection of the rig and just making sure I mean there's a lot of bouncing so um, making sure everything is all right I already lost uh, the handle for an antenna came unscrewed from all the bouncing and uh, so stuff is is bouncing around. Oh, that reminded me. I was going to turn off my um, gas. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to start turning off my gas when I travel and my refrigerator. All right. Let's take a break. Lights off. And my puppy. Hi, puppy. You're just obsessed with treats. Huh? <laughs>
perfect day for the road The blue sky will take us home We'll take it easy, we'll take it slow It's a good day for the road my camp I don't know two hours ago I traveled maybe 40 miles <laughs> and uh, I just stopped because uh, a car was pulled over on the side of the road and um, up here all the way on the Alaska highway and um, all through Alaska that usually means there's wildlife and um, I saw I looked in that's what I always do I look in to see which direction they're looking and they had their binoculars looking up at the hill and uh, they were in hunting fatigues, so I thought for a minute that maybe they were just looking for caribou to hunt. But I kept my eye out, and I saw a big black figure up there, and so I pulled over and got my binoculars out. I'm so glad I bought binoculars. And uh, there's a either a brown or a black bear. Dark, dark brown. It didn't look quite black. It was really, really dark brown. It wasn't a grizzly. And um, just got to pull over on the side of the road for the last 10 minutes and watch the bear through the binoculars. I tried to get pictures, still trying to figure out this new Canon. I'm not sure about the zoom. Uh, it was pretty far up there. So, I mean, I was comfortable st standing outside my rig, leaning against my rig, looking through the binoculars. He was pretty far away. I didn't even know I was here probably. Um, it's a shame I didn't have, don't have a long lens. Maybe one of these days, yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll pick up another hobby of, um, photography and learn how to use cameras and get long lenses and stuff like that so I can get good pictures. But anyway, um, turning on the computer, I'm turning, <laughs> turning on the camera, even though I'm on vacation, because I realized, uh, I just wanted to say, this is the way the Dalton, in my opinion, is meant to be traveled unless you're a trucker and you're working. But if you're just on here for leisure, uh, I actually am reading, what am I reading? Ghost Rider right now, and he's on a motorcycle, and he did the Dempsey in Up up in a Day and Back in a Day. Um, Dempsey, Dempster, uh, and that is the road in Canada that goes to the Arctic Circle. And I know, you know, I'm lucky. This is my life. I don't have a two-week vacation that I'm, you know, trying to squeeze everything in. Um, but I've been on the Dalton a week now, and... I, it doesn't matter if I go another 10 miles and find camp tonight. I really don't care, so... Um, going slow and easy and stopping to enjoy the scenery, stopping to enjoy the wildlife. My first bear outside of Denali in, um, Alaska, right? Yeah, I think so. I don't think I've seen a bear since I've been in Alaska outside of Denali. And I just left the tundra. I'm in the boreal forest now and, uh, grizzlies prefer the tundra. 
and the black and brown bears prefer the uh, forest. That's where their food is. So in the boreal forest, and that's where the bear was. I'm still looking to see if he comes back. He went up over the hill. But um, yeah, if you're ever going to do the, Dal the Dalton, I highly recommend doing it this way. Take your whole two-week vacation. I mean, if you love the outdoors, take your whole two-week vacation and do the Dalton. That's what I would do. It's amazing. All right. On Friday night. But, um, yeah. I think I'm, my my goal right now is uh, Wiseman, just north of Coldfoot. I want to go out there. Uh, Wiseman was featured one se season, or no, a few seasons, I guess. No, I guess quite regularly. I don't know. I don't watch it regularly. But on Life Below Zero. So, I want to go out there. I did a little reading. It's supposed to be a cute little town with a little bit of um, touristy stuff. So I'm going to go out there. It's also along a river, so I'm hoping to find some good camping. The first flat tire I've seen that I know of. <laughs> Three young guys. They've got a flat in the back. And they don't know. They're digging through, trying to figure out if they have everything they need. I asked them if they needed anything. I think they said they found everything. I'm at like 150 miles. So I have 150 miles to go to the end. Knock on wood. I made it. The end of the Dalton Highway. Or the beginning. <laughs> it's the end for me. I made it. Foggy, beautiful morning. Late August. Actually, it's Labor Day weekend. And there's quite a bit of traffic heading up. Probably more traffic on this road this morning than I've seen. The, I forgot how um, I'd forgotten how bad the, the first or last 40 miles are. It was pretty, pretty bad. So, uh, I made it. I made it without a single issue. Not a single problem except a blinker light went out. And Prudhoe Bay, or um, Dead Horse, has an Apple Auto Parts. So I was able to get a bulb, believe it or not, and fix my blinker. And look at my, and I wanted to check my tires just to make sure. <laughs> not a single flat tire. Nope, I didn't take an extra spare. I just took the one and didn't need it. Didn't need it. I did stop in Fairbanks and uh, went to Midas before I set out to make sure um, I had my tires and my brakes checked. And it was a good thing I did because uh, one of my tires was overinflated very overinflated, like 110 pounds <laughs> because my tire gauge broke and I was trying to eyeball it. I thought it had a slow leak and another one had a nail. So it's a really good thing I got my tires checked or I would have had problems and my brakes are in good, good. actually my back brakes I'm going to need probably by the time I get back to the lower 48. But yeah, look at 
so 13 days I spent on the Dalton Highway. One day shy of two weeks. I'm I'm pretty much out of, uh, I'm definitely out of produce. And uh, it's Friday, and it's the Friday before Labor Day. I need to get some mail uh, and um, get into Fairbanks and uh, get some business done. And uh, this has been a little bit of a vacation for me. A um, little bit. This this has been my vacation. Two weeks, no internet. The only internet I had was in Dead Horse, I think, for a day. So I got caught up with a, a little bit. But this was purposely going to be my uh, two week vacation and a much much needed break from 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 the from the internet. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. And um, gosh, driving here, there was so much I was going to say, and now I'm kind of like I don't know. Uh, is was the road as bad as I heard? No, actually not at all. But then again, I have a ton of experience driving my rig on bad roads. And the thing with the Dalton Highway is I would never try to do it in a hurry. I, part of the reason I didn't have any problems, I really believe this, is because this, the posted speed limit for most of it is 50 miles an hour. I drove averaged probably 35 or 40 miles an hour the whole way. It took me 13 days to do 815 miles. And uh, so... Uh, but I think about 50% of it is probably bad and 50% is pretty smooth. Uh, some of the hard packed clay and gravel parts are some of the best, really smooth. But then you have to be careful because you never know when you're going to run into really bad potholes or the ice break dips, which... Um, even though I'm done with the Dalton, the next 50 or 60 miles into Fairbanks is no piece of cake either. There's the bumpy ice break roads and you have to go really slow on those. I'm afraid of toppling over or bottoming out if I go too fast. Um, so yeah, no, the road really isn't as bad as I expected it to be. Uh, yeah, there are some parts that are really bad. The first 40 miles of the road, pretty bad. And then at mile 260 for about 50 miles, and that's after cold foot going toward dead horse after mile 260 there's some it's it's pretty bad there and what i describe as pretty bad in in respect to the dalton is long stretches of bad um most of it, other than those two really bad stretches, most of it, you know, it's potholed maybe for a mile, maybe for a couple miles, maybe just it's smooth and then there's potholes. But these two bad stretches, the 40 miles from here out, uh, pretty much bad the whole way. I ah, pavement. Ah, not so fast. <laughs> Um, I was doing 25, 30 miles an hour, maybe even less for 40 miles. It took me more than an hour and a half to get here from my camp, which was about 50 miles away. Um, and then the, uh, yeah, and then after Coldfoot uh, on the way to Dead Horse, that was pretty bad. So it, again, a long stretch of just constant bad. So you just have to go slow the whole way. Uh, I ran into a group of guys yesterday at one of the rest areas who had a flat tire. It was the only flat tire I saw, uh, as far as I know, on my whole trip. Uh, I saw only three other motorhomes, three, three, and I didn't see a single other solo person, solo, a solo woman, actually, I saw a couple men, so, um, I was the only solo woman out here, and, uh, got some kind of incredulous, wow, you're alone, <laughs> when I, when I talk to people, um, I'm feeling a little badass, I'm feeling a little badass, I'm gonna, I conquered it. Uh, again, I'm, you know, if nothing else here to say that the world is not as bad and scary and awful and dangerous as the world, as, as people want you to believe. Take your time. I took my time. You know, even if I did get a flat tire, I had everything I needed to prepare. I could have changed it. I had my spot. You know, they could have came and rescued me if I needed it. Uh, the one thing that I didn't do, I would recommend doing um, is getting a CB radio. I'm, I'm kind of bummed that I didn't have a CB because there are some blind, some of the roads are really narrow, uh, you know, and they can be slick. If you can see behind me, you know, either the rain or they wet the roads, they treat the roads with calcium something chloride or something. So actually my next, um, business is to go wash my rig. You have to wash that stuff off cause it eats away. Uh, and I'm pretty dirty. Pretty dirty. But anyway, this stuff can be a little slippery. And so, uh, you know, road conditions, you have to, I wouldn't, 
recommend this for a timid, nervous driver and uh, somebody who's inexperienced. But like I said, I've got a ton of experience driving on bad roads. You've seen some of the roads I've taken Matilda on. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's not an easy road by any means, but it's not nearly, I don't think it's as bad as, as everybody says it is. I expected 415 miles of of only being able to drive 20, 30 miles an hour. I expected 415 miles of this <laughs> and worse. Or I'll show you some of the footage I took. And it wasn't, you know, uh, uh, in fact, like I said, 50% of it, maybe 60% of it, maybe 70% is pretty smooth sailing. You just have to pay attention. Where am I? Um, you know, you, you, you just have to go slow, pay attention, watch the road. That's the nice thing about going so slow is I could watch the road and also watch the scenery. Um, be very respectful of trucks. I knew I was going extremely slow and most of the roads were wide enough that I didn't have to wait for a pullout. If a truck came up behind me, I just pulled over as far to the right as I could and let the truck pass. And, um, you know, same with going with the trucks going the other way. I pulled way over to the right to just give them plenty of space because there's a lot of uh, wide loads, a lot of trailer hauling and big equipment hauling out to Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse. And um, beautiful, amazing. Oh, I could spend a whole summer out here, except that there's limited services. Uh, so the services, um, plenty of gas. The most I paid five dollars and fifty cents a gallon in um, cold foot on the way out. Uh, but there's no grocery stores and I'm not sure if there's propane, um, but there's gas at Yukon River, Coldfoot, and then at Dead Horse, Prudhoe Bay. And so, um, you know, where, what does it say? Coldfoot is 175 miles. Oh, Yukon River. So 56 miles to Yukon River is the first gas station, 175 miles to Coldfoot. So I filled up at Coldfoot. Went out to Dead Horse. Where are we? Went out to Dead Horse, filled up again, and put a little bit more in at at um, Cold Foot. I didn't fill it because it was five dollars and fifty cents a gallon. So I just put in, I think, fifteen gallons. Hopefully, it's enough to get me to Fairbanks. Uh, there's a couple restaurants. There's a restaurant at Cold Foot Truck Diner, the the furthest north trucker truck stop. And uh, so I had, um, I stopped there one morning, or stopped there one day and had breakfast and uh, before I would head it up on my way. But 13 days, found amazing, beautiful boondocking. There's no shortage of gravel pits, just, just like all along the uh, Alaska Highway. No shortage of gravel pits. I saw a fox in camp yesterday. Uh, that's really the only wildlife. I saw a bear one day as I was driving way up on a hill. And I think I got some footage of that, but it was really far away. But other than that, I haven't seen really any wildlife. Uh, got to dip my, got to more than dip my toe. I waited in the Arctic Ocean. It was freaking cold. And uh, what a trip. What a great vacation. I'm really sorry to see it end, but it gave me some time to think and reflect about my uh, life and the direction that my life and my YouTube career are going to take. So uh, it was good, just like any vacation. It was really good, really relaxing. This is, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I mean, even if you just want to come out here and boondock, the boondocking was absolutely amazing. Even the free BLM campground I stayed at at Galbraith Lake. Oh, I did a hike out there. It was absolutely amazing and gorgeous. And so, let me see. 830 miles round trip. Not a single flat tire, not a single problem. Life is good. Heading into Fairbanks. Hi. <laughs> Sporting my Prudhoe Bay sweatshirt. My new favorite hoodie. <laughs> um, feeling a little badass, like I said. Amazing, beautiful ride. 
Uh, it's just the only the only bad part is this is a little bittersweet. This is my last big adventure before heading back to the lower 48. I don't want to go. I fell in love with Alaska. I love it here. I love the remoteness. I love the wilderness. I love how quiet it is. I love how unpopulated it is and how beautiful and wild. It's just, oh boy. There's, I, I'm tempted to stay. Honestly, I am tempted to stay. Uh, but I don't know that my RV, even if I didn't live in it, even if I were to rent a space, you know, I don't know, that might be some fun videos. Um, but I want to do it right. I want to come back and I want to do it right. Uh, I drove through Wiseman up there, uh, made famous by Life Below Zero. I drove through there and I, that's, I'd want to live someplace like that. I really do want to live off um, in a remote area and kind of fend for myself for a year, you know, cut my own firewood and figure out my food issue, my food. <laughs> I'd probably just at least start eating fish. I can't imagine um, hunting and eating and skinning and I can't imagine doing game, but I, I could probably do fish, but I want to come out here and try that. I'm thinking it would be a good TV show. <laughs> Carolyn's life in the bush or something, you know, um, that would be a fun show watching me stumble along trying to figure out how to be a survival survivalist sort of in, in Alaska. Uh, but I do want to come back. I'm, this isn't, Alaska has not seen the last of me. That's for sure. I'm even thinking that maybe someday when I'm done doing everything I want to do, maybe buying a piece of property here, but of course I need to spend a a winter here first but uh yeah even if i don't live in the rv just the thought of having the rv living in um you know 70 below mm, just makes me a little nervous about things <laughs> so uh yeah i'm gonna be heading down to the lower 48 uh, at this point i think my plan is to go back down the parks highway take the denali highway up to toke junction and then um going back through canada Oh, part of the reason I have to leave now is because as of October 1st, Canada, British Columbia requires all passenger vehicles to have studded tires. So I need to get through Canada before October 1st, although I have a month now. Yeah, I have a month, but time flies the way I travel. Um, you know, I'll probably be in Alaska probably at least another week, week and a half, maybe two weeks. Um... And then I'm going to go, I think, through Edmonton and Calgary and down through Montana and Salt Lake and then head over to um, the Bay Area and see my friends. All right. Last big adventure in Alaska. I need to get into Fairbanks, get my business taken care of. What a trip. The quiet out here is almost deafening. This is one of the few places where you can get away in Alaska where you can get away from road noise. All right. I think I've covered everything. Puppy wants out. My step is stuck because of the mud. All right. Come on, pup. If you want to get out for a sec, come on. What did you think of the Arctic? Huh? We haven't seen no stinking bears. <laughs> so yeah, I got to live two weeks. No, a week. I was a week. I got to live a week above the Arctic Circle. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I did it. on fire and watch my vessel sink cause I've seen the shores of every tide but I still wished I was in your sea I had buried my wandering heart deep into the earth cause when we were about 